Hey guys, it's Eddie here, and recently I've been working on a project that I wanted to show you guys. So I've actually been wanting to do this project for quite a while. Uh, essentially, I have this remote here, and this is an electric skateboard remote. And this happens to be the remote for the Backfire G3. Uh, if you guys don't know what that is, that's the Backfire G3. And so this is the remote that goes with it. So the reason why I wanted to make a holster for this remote specifically is because I was inspired by a design I saw a few years back. I don't know if you guys know this, but there's a design called the Nerf Holster. And essentially it's two magnets connected to a Nerf gun or a Nerf blaster. And then there are two magnets on the holster portion and so it just slots in and the magnets snap it into place and there's like clips that hold it. I was really inspired by that and I wanted to do my own design. A few reasons why I wanted to actually create a holster design for my remote is because first of all, it's actually really annoying to carry this thing around. Whenever I'm in the store, I always have to put it in my pocket or I have to use this lanyard here. Yes, it works, but it's not ideal at all. If I'm skating somewhere and, and wanting to grab items, if I'm shopping or something like that, and so the first priority was to get rid of that. I wanted to free up my hands and have this be stationary on my leg. When I placed this in my pocket, it actually started wearing a hole in my pocket. So the corner of the remote would start rubbing against random stuff that I was bumping into. I have my windbreaker and you can clearly see there's a hole in this thing. And that came from wearing that and using my remote and placing it into the pocket. I didn't want to keep breaking my stuff. So some requirements I had for this, since the remote by itself is already very light, I didn't want to add anything too bulky to it. I wanted to make a very thin minimalist, not stand out at all, primarily focused on not adding weight to this thing. I also wanted to use small magnets on this because the remote's so much smaller than an, an actual Nerf gun. A big magnet, that wouldn't look nice. I also wanted my design to be really easy to use. The holster action, I didn't want it to be very rough. I just wanted it to be really simple in design. I also didn't want any of the controls to be obstructed. So as you can see here on the top, there's a kind of wheel here. I didn't want any of my frame design to be caught in this wheel. There are also three buttons on the front. And lastly, I didn't want these to be obstructed either. An LCD panel and a switch. So put it simply, there are four main parts to the design. First of all, there's the frame housing, backing plate, a cover with a magnet on it, the holster portion covering to make sure that the remote doesn't slip. Let's get to the build. So I originally wanted to do the kind of same style of retaining collar as the holster. So if you guys can see here, I have a kind of a notch here on the bottom that is supposed to clip in to the holster and it's, and I have a hole here for the magnet. Uh, you can see here that it's actually a multi-part design. So I had the top portion part where I had the notch and then I also had the ring here. The original plan was to super glue these together and then friction fit it into here. Also super glue it onto the frame, but there are clear issues with this design. One being that the notch itself was so brittle. I have the dimension of this being around 1.5 millimeters. If I were just normally using it and I had to repeatedly move the piece in and out of the holster, I would assume that this would probably snap. As you can also see here, it's really, really thin. <laughs> Uh, I didn't think that this would hold up at all either, uh, even if I did super glue it. So I scrapped that idea. I ended up deciding to go for a flush fit kind of design. So this entire piece is one piece. Not only does this increase the strength of the piece, but I don't have to print as many pieces on my bed anymore. As I continued to create my housing for my remote, I realized that the parts that held the remote together were actually projection molded. And this meant that I needed to compensate for an angle that the parts would make when they came together. So I did that by adding it into my 3D model. Looking directly down the remote, you can see the two shells of the remote coming together at a slight angle. In my Fusion 360 model of the frame, you can also see how there's a slight bend in the parts of the frame that fit around the remote. The angle there is three degrees. On the right side, I have my original flat version of the remote housing. On the left, I have my angled version. And after I created that slight angle, the remote fit completely fine. Prior to this video, I had never used the canvas tool in Fusion 360, and I wanted to learn how to do that. As I was designing the cover, I was actually using a caliper and that was a terrible idea. I ended up 
doing somewhere around 17 variations of the same cover piece, just tweaking the measurements little by little so that I could get the exact proportions. And it was such a huge waste of time. So I used the canvas tool, imported my image of my remote, and I created the holster portion based around that image. The minute I printed out the prototype, the prototype came out perfectly and I didn't have to do very much tweaking after that. Another interesting thing I realized while using the canvas tool in Fusion 360, you actually don't need to be very accurate with the picture that you take for whatever you're trying to model. This is the picture that I used in canvas. You'll notice that I actually didn't take a perfect top-down picture of my remote. In fact, I was a little bit more to the right. There's no issues there and the remote fit perfectly. For the front cover, I simply used the dimensions from the holster and created a covering piece to stop the remote from falling out. Interestingly enough, the magnets actually do have an effect on the remote. Uh, I noticed that they actually do cause some kind of interference, so the polarity of the magnets do matter. If you look at this, if I have two magnets here and I hold it up to the remote, the wheels start spinning. So if I hold it here, wheels will spin on their own. If I flip it over like this and use the other side, no problem. If you guys want to do this project and you guys are planning to try it yourselves, do be aware that the magnets do have an effect on the remote. Guys, so here goes nothing. The action is really smooth. The magnet pulls the 
remote in really smoothly and really nicely. I really liked how it turned out. All right guys, so one last final test. I wanted to just see if it would fall while I was doing normal day-to-day -day stuff, so. Jumping is fine. Doesn't fall off when I'm jumping. Walking is fine, of course. And the last true test is running. So yeah, overall it turned out great. Um, couldn't be more happier with it, honestly. Thank you guys for watching. I hope to see you in the next one.